thank you very much. I'm very grateful to the African Center of Strategic Studies for inviting me. Uh, one of the reasons why I try as much as possible to accept the invitation from the center because it affords me an opportunity to learn. I learn a lot from the participants, and I enjoy from the difficult questions that you generally ask. They also make me to think twice and even thrice. So I'm really grateful to be here. The other aspect also is that it gives me an opportunity to make new friends and re-establish and reconnect with my old friends. So it's a great pleasure to be here. And it's uh, more difficult when I start here and listen to the last session. So I really know the type of questions that are going to come. They are not going to be easy ones. But as I've said, in the process, we shall all learn. Let me, in the next, uh, let me take just 15 minutes, and please, one is 15, stop me, so that we can have time to discuss. Uh, but uh, let me talk about, the, the, the issue I was asked to discuss is about leadership, strategic leadership, and I went looking at books and definitions and everything. Then it reminded me of a story of um, a general, uh, no, a, a lieutenant colonel, a battalion commander, who took his battalion out for an exercise. And uh, in the British setup, and in the setup when I was in the military, uh, as a young officer, uh, you go to the field, you would prepare the, uh, the messing area, that's where you eat, and the places for the officers, the places for warrant officers, senior NCOs, and everybody. So that was done. And then the uh, regimental sergeant major, the RSM, is always in charge. And then when everything is set, the boss, the battalion commander, comes in, and he took the round with the uh, RSM, and he looked around, he saw everything laid properly, very nice. But going around here, he couldn't find the restroom. So he asked the RSM, RSM, how about the restroom? And you know, those of you who know my generation, the English was not too much. So he said, sir, what is restroom? He said, how about the toilet? He said, oh, sir. Then he remembered that they never had any toilet. So he said, well, we're in the field. So he told the commanding officer, 100 yards any direction. <laughs> <laughs> Since they're in the field, just go 100 yards any direction. So please, in the definition, go 100 yards any direction in your definition, you won't be wrong. <laughs> but um, what I saw in some of the definitions, so many of them, and there are as many definitions as there are people asking questions. But leadership, I would say, is an act of exercising influence over others, which involves control, coordinating, direction, mobilizing, planning. The effect of this is towards realization of the organizational goal. All these things is to realize the, uh, the goal. So what then happened at uh, the strategic level? What makes it a little bit different? The strategic level issue comes in not by sheer luck. If you think by magic or by luck, you will be able to be a wonderful leader. I will say I humbly disagree. You will do it if you are determined and if you are ready to go into uh, some in-depth issue. For example, strategic leadership means ability 
to anticipate and envision the future by seeing beyond the curve. With good perspective and vision, seeing the big picture even beyond your lifetime. That is really what the strategic issue is all about, even beyond your lifetime. And as a strategic leader, you have to have good long-term planning. You have to see beyond other people. If you can see the same thing others are seeing, then you are not a strategic leader. You have to look at their own future and look at even the next generation from today. How are they going to? Because if you don't look at that and anticipate, then you will not be able to plan that uh, or, or, or come up with a plan that will take care of the future. And that is the challenges that I think uh, we have in the continent because there are no long-term planning. We buy equipment that some people don't need or we buy equipment or we are donated equipment just for the sake of it, not that it meets our own goal or our own expectation. Again, this, uh, strategic leaders should see before other people. You must see before other people. And you must see bigger than other people. So what does that mean? As a leader, if you want to take your team to the next height, if you do not see be better than them, earlier than them, and bigger than them, then there is no way you are leading because you will be a blind person leading the blind. As a, le as a strategic leader, you must also know your subordinates, the people working with you, and you must know what makes them feel happy, what makes them feel sad, and then what is their dream for the future. And then you must have the gift to be able to identify your team, what is their strong point, what are their weaknesses, how do you get results out of them, and then the next one, the opportunities. How do they fit into any opportunity? How do they turn challenges into opportunities? It's just like I was remember as a young officer reading about Field Marshal Slim, defeat into victory. So, um, I will be at random so that we can then find time to discuss. And when my sister comes in, I'm sure she will give you all the flesh. I'll give you the skeleton. Then she will provide the flesh. Um, the strategic leader, remember that you are talking at the highest level. So these are people who, in any action they are taking, they have to look at the national resources, the whole national resources. It's not just what you have. No, the whole national resources is what they are looking at. And because you are looking at the long-term planning, that now takes me into the issue of uh, operational, uh, the operational level. The operational level guys are those who bring the flesh, the operationalization of the plan that the strategic leaders are talking and planning. For example, terrorism. Uh, it's a big issue, not only in Africa, but in the whole world. What are the challenges? How do we combat terrorism? Then what to do to the operation of meeting that long-term plan is what the operational leaders are there for. And they talk about what type of equipment. If we want to do this, what type of equipment we have to purchase and we have to have. And then the tactical leaders. The tactical leaders are the, those who do the day-to-day -day running of every day that happens today. But the important thing that most of you that are here, some of you maybe belong to the strategic level, 
but most of you may be in the operational level. And you are then the live wire, as far as I'm concerned, because you are the bridge that bridges between the strategic leaders and the operational leader. And the good part about it also is that, luckily, a lot of you must have been tactical leaders before you move into the operational stage. I also want you to realize that the planning time for strategic leaders is long term. The planning time for operational leaders, uh, operational uh, at level is medium term, and that of tactical is short, and it is planning because you do not have time at the tactical level to ask why and how. No. And that is also why it is important that your tactical leaders are trained to be able to take quick decision on their feet because of time constraint. The approach, the strategic leaders look at it from the uh, extroverted, while those at the operational, they look at it from a, a broad and mix of introvert and extra. And then the actors, they, at strategic level, they have vision that was just like General Fulford today, visionary. You must be visionary leaders and look at it from a, um, uh, the mission and the vision. And then the operational, how do you achieve the vision and the mission? While the tactical guys are just how do we do it now and achieve it, the mission, immediately. The scope is wide for strategic leaders, is moderate for visionary uh, operational, and is routine for the tactical leader. Let me quickly say one or two things before because of time. At every level of leadership, I will say that you need to have an inner circle. It doesn't matter if it could be even informal, but if it is formal, you need to have an inner circle. There is no leader, at even at tactical level, that is a lone ranger. No. You need people around you. The stronger, the knowledgeable, your close people are, the better, and the, you can have a huge impact. The weaker they are, definitely, the, uh, the less effective you will be as a leader. So for you, as a leader, you must identify it. And please, don't wait until you become an operational or you become a strategic leader before you start looking at building blocks with people. Because you will need them. You will need them, and when you need them, you will know where you can find them. I remember one time, uh, when I was in Sierra Leone as a deputy force commander, my president came to the swearing-in of uh, President, late President uh, Tijan Kabal. And when I met him, uh, when he was leaving, I saluted him. And then he looked at my name. I said, oh. Then I told him, thank you, Mr. President. You have uh, allowed me to go to New York as a deputy military advisor at the United Nations. He said, oh, you are the officer. Go. I know where to find you when I need you. I didn't understand that. But in six months, I was in New York. I was recalled to go back home to Nigeria as chief of army staff. So you begin to build relationship in before you reach there. And if any, I found that very important because some of the relationship I have built were the people that actually helped me when I called them back and we succeeded together. You must attract people with diverse skills with diverse knowledge. And please, don't do what we know how to do best in Africa. You must come from my ethnic group, you must come from my religion, or you must come, you must be the son of my brother-in-law and this, no. Please, the people must be knowledgeable, they must have skills to help the, uh, uh, the organization. 
and learn how to delegate. Mm -hmm. Delegate responsibility to those who have the ability. Don't delegate responsibility to people who you know cannot succeed. And let me quickly uh, touch on issue of ethic before I sit down. Let me quickly uh, touch on this issue of ethic. Ethic is a very, very important thing. And I remember that uh, I was reading somewhere uh, President Abraham Lincoln asked one um, Francis Leba to create the General Order 100. And that General Order 100 was what brought to the American um, armed forces what you call the rule of military con conduct. How do you operate? Do you remember also that hardly, and I can maybe stick out my head and say it, hardly would there be any war that two African countries will fight themselves? Since Nigeria did not fight Cameroon, so nobody will fight. <laughs> and then, what then is going to happen? 90% of our challenges are internal. Mm -hmm. Boko Haram in Nigeria, Boko Haram in Niger, Boko Haram in Chad, Boko Haram in Cameroon. Mali, you know the story. Somalia, you know the story. These are the challenges we are going to face. How are we preparing the leadership for that? And when you go, do not forget to teach your young from the recruit and the young officers training. You must teach them about ethic. You do not allow people to kill others indiscriminately. Because the insurgents, Live among the people. If you brutalize the people, they will hide the insurgents. And I know, even in my country, at one time, people were more confident about the insurgents than they were confident about the government forces. So, and you, if you follow that time, there was a time that a portion of Nigeria as big as Belgium was taken over by Boko Haram because the people couldn't trust the government forces. So if you operate, remember, you must win the heart and the mind of, your, of the people. You must be accepted by the people. If you are not, then you are lost. And you also remember that in getting combat efficiency and effectiveness, it's going to work within the rules that you have set. There must be norms if you don't have them. There must be norms, there must be regulation, there must be laws that govern the behavior. Uh, I think I'll be around to talk in two days' time or so about civil-military relationship, and I will, I will elaborate more when we discuss that. But I want to to quick, uh, before I sit down, to quickly tell you that the best way for leadership is to influence the organization, but you must set good examples. Leading is about making impact. If you can't make an impact, you are not a leader. Leading is not chasing the vision only. Leading is making the vision work and not what will I get because of the uh, vision or the mission. And your action speaks louder than voice. But remember, in the uh, principles of war, flexibility is one of them. But the flexibility will be that of behavior and not flexibility of value or ethic. You can never be flexible about values and ethics because they are crucial. And as a leader, at strategic level and operational level, having your uh, inner circle is not just enough. 
you must also empower your subordinates to make decisions. You must allow communication to flow properly. And you must allow your subordinates to be innovative, creative in what they do. And please, don't kill anybody because he makes a mistake. The best way to learn is from your mistakes. And that I learned the hard way. One of my bosses covered me so well when I was a young officer. I remember I made a very serious blunder that a general told my boss that I'm the most useless officer he has ever made on his life. And my boss covered me up, then came back to the office and asked me why did it happen. And all that happened, a letter I couldn't type. I didn't know how to type. I gave it to a soldier to type, and he made so many mistakes. It's unlike these days, you remember, you have to make correcting fluid and pop up this machine. That was what happened. And by the time I wanted to correct the letter, they said they wanted it. So I signed it with a making correction with pen. And that of general saw me as the most useless major Nigerian Army ever produced. And that gave me a challenge. I had to buy a typewriter, and I had to learn how to type. And it helped me throughout my junior division, senior division, staff college, uh, defense college, and even here in NDC, I type all my documents myself. So there's a good side to everything. We can discuss more during the question and answer. Thank you.